Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. In today's journey, we are at Ocherius in the parish of Sentan. We are heading towards Western Jamaica. Continue to sit back, continue to relax, and continue to enjoy this journey with me. In the news today, in this first incident, that guy on your screen, his name is Peter McDonald, but he's popularly known as Junior. Junior is 19 years old and he's living at Fustick Grove in the White House area of Westmoreland. On Thursday, November 30, Junior, who has been in police custody from the week before, he was officially charged by detectives at the Savannah Lamar Sissoka office for RAPE. The child who Junior has allegedly troubled is only five years old. The allegations are that the young girl, she returned from school and she was at a yard where she normally wait until her mother got home when Junior took her to another house and did you know what to her. When the child got home later in the evening, she told her mother what took place and a report was made to the police. We are told that Junior's mother, on learning about the report, she took him to the White House police station and handed him over to the police. So, Junior's mother, she did the right thing. But, Junior's stepmother, may I talk to you? I know exactly what you are doing. You are living overseas and you are calling the child's mother and making all kind of offers. Trouble, did it? Trouble, did it? Stop it. So, Junior... He'll be going to the courts shortly. In this next incident, it is alleged that last week, Sunday evening, November 26th, listen me carefully. These are the allegations. It is alleged that last week, Sunday evening, November 26th, about minutes after 5 o'clock, a female, she was born on October 19, 2009, 14 years old, and she's living at Petersville in the White House area of Westmoreland. It is alleged that this 14-year-old, she and a friend, they went to a shop in her community. It is further alleged that she saw seven guys standing outside a gate and she started a conversation with them. It is further alleged that while she was talking to the guys, one of them known as Bikey and another one known as Boney, they both grabbed their hands and pulled her to Boney's house nearby where they held her down on a bed and forcefully did you know what with her against her will. A report was made to the police and Boney, he was taken into police custody. He has since been charged for the offense of R.A.P.E. Boney's correct name is Tajay Jones. He is also known as G-Man. He was born on August 16, 2001, 22 years old. He is living at Petersville District. So, what I just outlined are the allegations that will be presented in court. But the question is, are those allegations true? Now, let me tell you what I'm learning. And listen to me carefully. It is said that the young girl, she is involved in a relationship with Another teenager from the community. That teenager who she's involved with is either 15 or 16 years old. It is said that she went to visit her boyfriend at Boney's house where they did you know what. When they were done, the boyfriend, he assisted in holding her down and Bikey and Boney. They also had their way with her. So... Anywhere you look at it, a crime was committed, but lies are being told. And the young girl, she's protecting her so-called boyfriend. 
So let me talk about an important topic and one that we need to talk to both our daughters and sons about. It's called battery. Do you know what I mean by battery? You don't? You never hear say youngsters, young boys, especially in school, them run a battery on this or that girl? You ever hear about it? Well, listen to me carefully. Sometimes the female, they willingly participate, but sometimes they are forced. Well, whichever way you want to look at it, it spells trouble. Because most of the times when you hear about battery, the female is usually underage. So that in itself is trouble. So whether the female who is underage willingly participate, the participants can be criminally charged. If she did not willingly participate, trouble same way. We need to tell our sons that they can get into trouble for it. And we need to tell our daughters that their so-called boyfriends will set up their friends to battery them. Sometimes, you know, and truth be told, sometimes we are afraid to say certain things to our children, but you would have frightened to know some of the things that they know. Look at this now. Look at this. Tajay Jones, also known as Boney or G-Man. He should be leaving the island shortly on an overseas work program, but that will never happen. All because of a bad decision. I am also told that Boney's family members, they had to fork out over $40,000 to pay extortionists in jail at the Savannah Lamar lockup or whichever lockup he's being housed. So, boy, I'm tell you, you know, <laughs> Boney, he'll be going to the courts shortly. We are told that Bikey, he is wanted. In this next incident, this one took place last night. Saturday, December 2, almost 12 midnight. It took place on Norman Malley Boulevard, popularly known as the Beach Road. And that section where it took place is over on the Hanover side. Our information is that that guy on your screen, his name is Tharn Chambers, but he was popularly known as Tani. Tani was born on June 22, 1995, 28 years old, and he lived at Prospect District in the parish of Hanover. Our information is that Tani, he left a party in Negril and was heading home. If you look on your screen, there is the road that Tani was traveling on. Tani, he was driving a grey Toyota Vitz motor car and he was heading towards Orange Bay with other passengers in the car. Our information is that on reaching a section of the road, Tani, he ended up losing control of the Toyota Vitz. As a result, the car went into the path of a white motor vehicle that was traveling in the opposite direction. Both vehicles collided and Tani's car spun around. Now, if you look on your screen, the Toyota Vitz that Tani was driving, it ended up collided into that concrete pole located on one of the sides of the road. There is a closer look of the concrete pole. The Toyota Vitz, it received extensive damage to the front and right sections. Tani, he ended up dying on the spot and three passengers who were in the Toyota Vitz, they were taken to hospital for medical treatment. The white motor vehicle that Tani's car collided into, it did not stop. Him take away himself for whatever reason because he was not at fault in this accident. Sad indeed. In this next story, on Sunday afternoon, August 12th, just a few minutes after 12 midnight, a 67-year-old taxi driver and a 54-year-old man known as Rocky, they got into a heated argument at Hampton in the parish of St. James. It is said that Rocky, he left and returned shortly. When he returned, he was armed with a knife. It is alleged that Rocky, 
he used the knife to inflict serious wounds to the 67 year old taxi driver's stomach and right arm. Rocky, he then made good his escape on foot in the area. The taxi driver, he managed to drive himself to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he went into surgery immediately. He was admitted in a serious condition. However, he survived and a report was made to the police. And they have been looking for Rocky from ever since. Well, yesterday afternoon, Saturday, December 2, Rocky, he was spotted at a hardware in the Hampton area and he was picked up by the police. He has since been charged for wounded with intent. His correct name is Ansel Reed. And like I told you, he is 50 years old and he's living at Hampton District. So, Rocky, he'll be going to the courts shortly. This next incident, it took place at Duncan Square in the parish of Trelawney. It took place yesterday morning, Saturday, December 2, about some minutes to 12 midday. We are learning that a man, he's known as Carpy, and Carpy is said to be in his late 50s. He drove and parked his white Toyota Probox motor car in front of a meats and chemical shop along the Clarkstone Main Road at Duncan's in the parish of Trelawney. A female in her Mid 30s, she was also in the car. We are told that Carpi, he went into the shop and purchased a bottle of rum. He returned to his car and he was about to enter when hoodlums in a grey Toyota Axio motor car opened a barrage of gunshots at him. Carpi, he managed to run to the back of the car and the female, she managed to jump out of the car and sought refuge in a nearby building. The hoodlums, they continued firing shots at Carpi. They then drove away, making good their escape. When the smoke was cleared, it was observed that Carpi, he was shot. He was hit eight times. Carpi was hit to the right side of his chest, his right arm, his right forearm, the right side of his abdomen, his left knee his left thigh and his left forearm. Carpe, he was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was admitted in a very, very serious condition. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, 11 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene and it is likely that some of the pen shells might have dropped in the car that the hoodlums were in. The mayhem. In this next story, we are learning that Friday night, December 1, about 8 o'clock, residents of the Westchester Cumberland areas of Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine, they heard gunshots being fired in the area. Early yesterday morning, residents of the area, they stumbled upon the body of that guy on your screen. He was later identified as Shavoy Ricardo O'Neill McIntosh. He was born on June 11, 1989, 34 years old, and he said to be a music producer. He lived at Green Pond in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. Chavoy, he was found lying in bushes along a dirt track with a large wound to his throat. He appeared to have died from the previous night. So the question is, what was Chavoy? doing in Portmore. More to come. The mayhem. In this next incident, this one took place early yesterday morning. Saturday, December 2, about 6 o'clock. It took place at the Savannah Lamar Market on Great George Street in Savannah Lamar in the parish of Westmoreland. We are learning that a man, his name is Mr. Owen James. On the 22nd of next month, January, he would be celebrating his 56th birthday. He was a higla and he lived at Mafuta district in the parish of St. James. So, for years, Owen James, he would travel from Mafuta district early every Saturday morning. Go to the Savannah Lamar market with his stock, unload, sell and go back home. That's what he was doing 
early yesterday morning. He was in the process of unloading his banana and other fruits from his white Nissan AD wagon motor car when a motorcycle with two hoodlums aboard drove up and stopped. The pillion, he jumped off the bike with a gun in his hand, pointed the gun at Mr. Owen James' head and BAM! Mr. James, he fell to the ground and that was it for him. The two hoodlums, they then rode away on the bike, making good their escape. Mr. Owen James, he ended up dying on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, 1.45 spent shell was recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, in this next incident, this one took place yesterday morning. Saturday, December 2, about 11 o'clock. It took place along Namprel Road in Negril, in the parish of Westmoreland. We are learning that that man on your screen, his name is Marlon Thorne. He was born on August 21, 1980, 43 years old. And he was a maintenance operator employed to a popular hotel on the Beach Road in Negril. He lived at Sheffield in the parish of Westmoreland. We are told that Marlon, he was driving a grey Toyota Corolla motor car from a minor road and was about to enter the Nampel Road main road. Marlon, he was approached by two hoodlums who were travelling on a motorcycle. The pillion, he brandished a gun and opened gunfire hitting Marlon to his upper body. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape. Checks were made and Marlon... He was seen sitting around the steering wheel of the car bleeding from his upper body. He ended up dying on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, two 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button. As also, hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, so the foolishness continues at Garden District. The mayhem continues at Garden District. The bloodletting continues at Garden District in the White House area of Westmoreland. This latest incident took place last night, Saturday, December 2, about 8 o'clock. Now, our information is that that guy on your screen, his name is Denloy Brown, but he was popularly known as Japa. He was born on September 23. 1981 and he lived at garden district in the white house area of westmoreland so this is what we are learning i carried a story about that guy on your screen on tuesday his name is javan faster but he was popularly known as koto koto was shot and killed monday night at garden in white house we are told that sometime last month Koto and Japa, they were involved in an argument. Shortly after that argument, a guy associated with Koto attacked Japa and inflicted a serious wound to his belly. Word on the street at the time is that persons were saying that it was the wannabe Dan, Koto, who ordered the attack on Japa. Koto was killed Monday night and some of his cronies, they were of the view that Japa had something to do with it. Are you following me? So, last night, Japa, he was at a family member's house. He, the family member, and a female, they were at the side of the house. Japa, he was seated and talking to them when a lone hoodlum stepped up with a gun in his hand. The hoodlum opened gunfire at Japa. The family member and the female, 
they ran off. But the hoodlum, he was not interested in them. When the hoodlum was finished pumping bullets into Japa, he made good his escape. When the shooting subsided, Japa, he was found in a pool of blood with gunshot wounds to his upper body. Japa, he died on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, a total of 10 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Criminals, they